So I promised to share with you guys the story I had about the Iditarod racing and dogs and all that sort of stuff. So Mike and I stayed with this family, the Riddle family in Alaska. And as we arrived at one o'clock in the morning, we hear all this howling and crazy sounds out in the yard. Turns out they have 25 sled dogs in their yard in five and a half feet of snow. And the lady that owns the dog, the wife, her name is Alyssa Riddle. And Alyssa's family had lots of things going on when she was a teenager and they were looking for a place to live. And of all people, Susan Butcher had these log cabins on her property and she had one available that they could live in. Her family lived there for a little while while they were finishing their house. And then when Susan was a teenager, about 17 years old, I mean, when Susan, when Alyssa was a teenager, about 17 years old, she went to live at Susan's property full time and she was cleaning up dog kennels. She was feeding the dogs and she became a dog handler for Susan Butcher which is a really exciting thing because I've actually read about Susan Butcher a bunch of times in the Iditarod. And the first day we were there, she took me to see two different, those short dog races like I talked about in the video, which was kind of nifty because I'm like, oh, I, I just read about that. So that was kind of cool. And then she took Michael and I that evening to go see a different race. Um, just some of the people as they were coming in and their dogs camped out so we could see what it actually looked like on these larger races. And, um, while that was going on, one of her friends, she heard her sled caught on fire during the Iditarod. So they have to carry all of their belongings with them. They carry hay with them. They carry all the food for the dogs. Everything is right there on the sled with them. And so she had a camp stove and they're about, you know, there's just kind of this cylinder and you can't tell if they're on fire or not. So she had put it away thinking the fire was out and it turns out the flame was not out. So as she's racing down the Iditarod, the whole sled just poof, caught on fire because you know you have food dog food you have hay you have bedding for the dogs and that sort of stuff and so her Iditarod was over then the next day I asked her tons of questions about her dogs and then the next day we got to actually go out she let us help pull the dogs out while she got them ready they get on this chain ahead of time when they're getting ready to be hooked up to the to the lead lines and Michael, I have some pictures on the site for you. Michael actually harnessed three of the dogs himself. The kindest, gentlest, most sweet dog was Seahawk. And half the dogs we raced with that day were her siblings. And the cool thing about that was after we got done, neatest thing on earth, if you ever get a chance to race on a sled, go on a sled with dogs pointed. It's amazing. Um, but as we got back to the house, Alyssa's friend that had worked with her with Susan back when she was a teenager, is racing the Iditarod right now. Alyssa doesn't race because she has a baby and she can't race right now. Um, but her friend Jessie, who she had actually worked with as a handler at Susan's ranch, was in the Iditarod and she's in first place. At least she was when I left. I haven't looked to see if the race is over yet. She was in first place, seated to possibly be the first woman to win the Iditarod since Susan Butcher, who both Alyssa and Jessie, who's winning the race right now, worked for. I thought that was pretty nifty and I thought you'd enjoy it. So when you're looking on our Google Classroom, there are pictures of Mike setting the dogs up. There are pictures of the dogs. And if I can get the videos on there, I will. Right now it's having a hard time converting them. So if you don't get to see the videos on Google Classroom, you will be able to see them when we get back to school. See ya.